Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the payback period and the discounted payback period. Well, what are we discussing here? Well, both of them are capital budgeting tools, capital budgeting methods, just like NPV, net present value, just like the internal rate of return. They help us do what? They help us evaluate whether we should undertake a capital budgeting project. Now, what is a capital budgeting project? A big ticket item purchase, buying a new warehouse, expanding internationally, undertaking a major uh, factory renovation. This is what a capital budgeting project. Rather than using NPV or IRR, some companies, not many, use the payback period or the discount payback period. So what they focus on in the discount payback period is time. What they're looking at is time. Specifically, how long does it take to recover the money you put into the project from its cash inflows? So when they when under, when they undertake this decision, the owners, the investors, or the managers, their, ho their only concern is, tell me how fast I recoup my investment, I recover my investment. So the payback period ignores the time value of money. It's a straightforward. It's like dividing the initial investment by, by the annual cash inflows. The discounted payback period adjusts for the time value of money. That's why it's called discounted. Discounted means finding the present value using a discount rate, making it more accurate, taking into account time in real world scenarios. Both methods are usually favored by more conservative investors and owners who wants to know how quickly do I get my money back. And this is what we will discuss in this session. Those two methods, their formulas, how they're computed, their strength, their weaknesses. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello, my name is Farhat. You are here because you are either an accounting student, a finance student, or someone who's studying for their CMA or CPA exam. Great, you are looking for some additional help, and we can help you. I strongly encourage you to visit my website, farhatlectures.com. I offer additional lectures, resources, including PowerPoint slides, multiple choice questions, in some circumstances, exercises, and true-false questions. Our material is aligned with your CPA review courses, with your CMA review courses, with your college courses. I offer a risk-free trial that you can try to find out whether my website can help you or not. If you find it helpful, you subscribe, you keep your subscription. If not, you cancel and your risk is free. If you like this recording, if you like my lectures, you would like what's on the website. Give me a chance to help you with your college courses as well as professional certification. I hope to see you on the website. Starting by computing, calculating the payback period with an example. Let's assume a company want to invest in new equipment costing 120,000. The equipment will bring $30,000 annually in cash inflows. Management always want to have project that would recoup their money within five years. Would this project be acceptable? Well, here's a simple calculation. I will take my investment 120 divided by my annual cash inflows and I will find out the answer is four years. Will they accept? Yes, they will because as long as it's within five years, we will accept the project. So they will give it the green line. This capital project is a go ahead. How about if we have multiple projects? Let's take a look at, you know, two projects competing. How do we evaluate them using the payback period. Let's say a company is comparing two projects, project A and project B. Each require initial investment of 90,000. Cash inflows for project A is 50,000 in year one, 90,000 in year two, and no inflows afterward. Project B, 40,000 in year one, 30,000 in year two, then 25,000 years annually from year six to year eight. So if we compute the payback period, I'm sure you know that project A would recover the money in year two. Project B will not cover the money in year two, will cover the money after year two. So if the company is strictly looking at payback period, 
which project they would choose they would choose project a because they would recover their money within two years which is faster than project b now but does it make sense here not really not really why because what's happening in the payback period we are ignoring year six to year eight and year six and year eight we're getting seventy five thousand dollar we're ignoring this simply put what we have to do is well we're going to look at the discounted uh, cash discounted pay period discount the seventy five thousand to see if it's worth undertaking the project b versus a but payback period will ignore will ignore this because they will get to year two they would say project a is better we stop that's it so not always because one major flaw of the payback period which is we'll see as a weakness it's ignoring cash inflow beyond the payback period project b generate additional cash flows in later years which is not considered in the basic payback calculation and that's one of its weaknesses now now let's take a look at how do we compute uneven cash flows just just kind of look at an example so because in the real world most inflows are uneven you don't get the same amount of money every year in a project unless you invest in an annuity which is that's totally different uh, so let's assume you invest five thousand dollar in a project and here's the cash flow from this project year one one thousand two hundred year two eight hundred year three fifteen hundred year four twelve hundred year five one thousand now we need to compute when do you get your money back well the first year the cumulative is 1200 did you get the 5000 not yet year two you get an additional 800 now it's 1200 plus 1200 plus 800 you're up to 2000 is it 5000 not yet year three you got 1000 1500 you're up to 3500 year four an additional 1200 now you're up to 4700 you're getting close notice it's going to take you at least four years and in the fifth year in the fifth year you would need three hundred dollar from the fifth year and we assume that you are going to earn this money evenly so what's going to happen is this so the project to break to to get to your payback period it's going to take you four years for sure then in year five you're going to need 300 out of the thousand so you need 30 percent of year five 30 percent if you multiply 30 percent by 12 months 12 months in a year which is 30 percent of a year that's three months 3.6 month so you're going to take four years three months and 60 percent of a month 60 percent of a month is 18 days and it's going to take you four years, three months, and 18 days to get your payback period for this project. So this is how we compute uneven cash flows when we're computing the payback period. Now, let's factor the time value of money. What does that mean? We're using now the discounted payback period. And let's assume we're discounting the cash flow at 12%. Let me ask you this before I do that. Would it take more time or less time to get to the payback period now? So in other words, the the undiscounted took us four years, three months, and 18 days. The discounted, it's going to take us more because when we discount the money, they lose value because of time. So the 1,200 becomes $1,071.60. This is the cumulative. Then... Uh, sorry yes this is the cumulative then the 800 becomes uh, you, we multiplied by 0 0.797 will equal to uh, six hundred thirty seven dollars and sixty cent we add this amount to this amount and now we have one thousand seven hundred and nine now some of you are wondering where is Farhat coming with these discount well I'm coming with these discount if we go to the present value annuity table going to the discount table present value table sorry not annuity we go to the 12 percent and we're looking at period one period two period three four and five so this is what I'm getting the discount from so just in case you're wondering so you'll take the cash flow multiplied by the discount to get to the discounted amount then you add it to the prior year until we get to year five by the time we got to year five the amount is only four thousand one hundred and seven dollars and forty cent which is 
short than the 5,000 initial investment, this project is rejected, taking the payback, discounted payback period. Advantages of the and disadvantages, it's simple. The advantage, it's simple, easy to compute and understand. It's basically a screening tool. What, what is a screening tool? Sometimes management or the owners just want to, they, they want to know, do I recover within this amount of time or not? If not, don't even study the project. I don't want it. It's, it's, it's a quick, easy to, uh, to take it out. It's cash focused. Prioritize liquidity by highlighting short term payback. Simply put, they want project that gives you the money quickly back, which is liquidity. This advantage is it ignores long term gains. It does not account for cash inflows after the payback. Sometime this project could generate cash forever. And this is great. But if you're using the payback period, you might reject this. It lacks precision because it ignores the time value of money, assuming we're using the payback period. If we're using the discounted, that that weakness is out. And you saw it in the example that it does kind of help you make a better decision. Misleading priorities. Shorter payback does not always mean a better investment. There are other factors. The discounted payback period addresses some of these issues, but still focuses only how long does it take to recover the initial investment. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. Which of the following highlights a potential advantage of using the payback period for evaluating investment? So potential advantage. The payback period is a straightforward and simple to understand, making it accessible for decision makers. Is it straightforward and easy to understand? I hope so. Yes. So A is correct. B is out. C could be correct. D is out. The payback period method ignores the time value of money, focusing solely on the recovery of the initial amount. So this is the regular payback. Yes, the regular payback period ignores the time value of money. Is this an advantage? It's true. But th is this an advantage? It's not an advantage. It's a true statement. They're not asking you whether the statements are true. The first one is an advantage because it's true. The second one is true, but not an advantage. Therefore, the answer is A. What should you do now? Whether you are a student, accounting, finance, or studying for your accounting or finance professional certification, go to Farhat Lectures for additional resources. Farhat is always here to help. Invest in yourself and stay safe.